and welcome to another episode of The Clever Clarinetist. I'm your host, Dr. Larkin Sanders. Today we are doing a trial of Chedeville Umbra mouthpieces. I have their beautiful cases here and all the mouthpieces lined up over here. I'm really excited to give these a shot. I have been playing on a Chedeville Elite mouthpiece now for the past couple of years um, and they find that they pair really well with synthetic reeds, which as you know, is really convenient. And I have learned to really like the sound of the setup. Um, they're really fancy mouthpieces. I really like them, uh, but I've never given these umbras a shot. So I just unpacked them. I haven't tried them at all. So while making this video, it will be a total surprise to both you and to me. So without further ado, let's get started. Like with any good scientific experiment, I will be playing first my control, which is my Chedeville Elite F2 mouthpiece. Um, the rest of the setup consists of a Silverstein hexaligature in rose gold and a Silverstein ambipoly reed in three and a half, uh, primo, and a Corbin traditional barrel that is 65 millimeters long and a Selmer Paris Présence B flat clarinet. I will be playing two F major scales in three octaves, one that is completely slurred and one that is articulated, and I will do an excerpt from Brahms's Sonata Number no. 2 in E flat major. So, here is my control. <laughs> mouthpiece it's right in the middle as far as the spectrum of tip openings is concerned at 1.1 millimeters open um, and as I go through these other mouthpieces I'm going to start from the smallest tip opening and work my way up to the biggest tip opening that I have so I was sent an F00 to an F4 there are also an F5 and F6 in this line uh, but those tip openings are so big they're a little bit on the obscure side. If you're really into jazz clarinet playing, you might be interested in them, but they are really, like really open, like 1.3. Like every reed's gonna feel like a two by four, I think, on something that big. Um, and the uh, F4 is gonna be a 1.2 millimeter tip opening. So let's get started with the F00, which is a 0.95 millimeter tip opening. is that this is a lot brighter than my Elite F2 mouthpiece and I think that's primarily due to the very teeny tiny tip opening of this mouthpiece which is less than a millimeter. Um, it fits my ligature really well and the table of this mouthpiece is really level and it was really easy to line up my reed and it was not resistant. So the smaller the tip opening of a mouthpiece the less resistant it's naturally going to be so you can play it with harder reeds. Um, and it kind of allows you to find the resistance in your instrument itself or in your barrel. Some people like the resistance up here, some here, and some down in here. Um, I like my resistance probably up in my mouthpiece more than down in my instrument. Um, but to each their own, let's move on to the F0, one millimeter open. <laughs> Thank you. 
but it's still a little bit, uh, it feels a little bit wild to me because of how not resistant it is. Um, but this would be a great option for anyone who is having like maybe soft palette issues or just has issues with resistance in general. This is a really nice mouthpiece. Let's keep going. The F1 mouthpiece, which is a 1.05 millimeter tip opening. <laughs> that I really like, which is very much in the middle. Um, so this one's again, 1.05 millimeter tip opening. This is a really lovely sound. So this would be very like similar to a 5RV Lyre from Van Doren or a, um, an X5 from D'Addario, just for a reference. It's like the same tip opening. I really like this mouthpiece. Again, it's not terribly resistant. It's really easy to play on. And I felt like the intonation is improving for me as well as the resistance starts to increase a little bit. Let's go on to the mouthpiece that I predict I'm going to like the best, the F2 with a 1.1 millimeter tip opening. Just like mine. <laughs> mouthpiece. I felt myself still being a little bit clumsy, like more clumsy on this mouthpiece than I was on the previous F1 mouthpiece. Um, I like it, but I don't like it as much as the mouthpiece I'm currently playing on. Let's keep going. All right, this is the F3 mouthpiece with a 1.15 millimeter tip opening. <laughs> flexibility. Um, I bet I can play a pretty sweet Gershwin Nicholas on this. Do you want to see? Let's find out. <laughs> So that's kind of a benefit of getting a more open mouthpiece is that you can do some cool stuff like that. Glissandi are a little bit easier or any kind of note bending. You can do all kinds of cool weird things or jazzy things, however you like to think of it. Um, and something else I'm noticing, an observation I'm just now having is that these mouthpieces for me require a really high tongue position. Um, 
and my sound tends to be like on the darker like more spread side of things and then like in the negative side of it and if you are someone who feels like your sound is on the more like pinched bright side and you're seeking more darkness in this mouth in your mouthpieces these are a great option for you i tend to seek a little bit more brightness and brilliance actually in my mouthpiece because i feel like my mouth is just not designed for it i tend to have a bright <laughs> like i said in the on the worst of days a very spread sound on that side of the dark spectrum um but i'm gonna keep going i only have one more mouthpiece left to try and i honestly have no idea how it's gonna go All right, F4, 1.2 millimeter tip opening. <laughs> piece I have felt with that tip opening so it's cool that we can get these like bigger tip openings which would provide you with more projection as well as flexibility um, if you have a bigger tip opening mouthpiece um, then you have potential for more projection it's great for people who are playing an orchestra or playing in situations where they really need to come out over the top of things I know for me that's important because I have this group called porch music that's a classical group that specializes in playing outside so um, I know for some someone like me that's really important um but yeah i really like this f4 mouthpiece and now that i know that this mouthpiece isn't very resistant now i really want to try the f5 and f6 so i might reach out to the folks at shedeville about getting those other two mouthpieces i really like these mouthpieces i think they would be really great for someone who is looking to add a little bit of darkness in their sound who is looking to kind of shut off some of the like uh brightness and um I don't know, prickly sounds of their instrument. Um, it's really cool that you can get a big tip opening without adding too much resistance to the setup. And um, I just like the way they felt. They felt really well balanced. Um, I'm not gonna switch from my Elite mouthpiece, uh, but I am glad to know that these are on here and I do have them available in my shop. If you're interested in trying these mouthpieces, please check out my website, Clever Clarinetist. Dot com. We can set up a trial if you'd like to try the Elite mouthpieces and the Umbra mouthpieces side by side. We can make that happen for you. Um, or if you're interested in trying any of my products, I can make that happen for you, either in person or over the mail. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.